Okay, guys, so we are going to start doing these calls once a month where I do a little bit of a game plan for the team as to how I'm going to set up my month. And you guys can just take it and use it, share it with your team. Um, like I said, tweak it and use it, whatever, okay? But before we get into the calendar, you guys, and talking about those details, I first wanted to share with you guys a couple things that are my focus for July, um, just with the grand scheme of things, besides just looking at this calendar, and then it'll make a little more sense as to why I have things there. So first and foremost, you guys, as a coach, we should all be focused on our journey, okay? So for me, I am 100% focused in on finishing the ultimate reset. Some of you guys know that I am officially in week two, very excited about that, and I should be able to finish right in time to start lift four, okay? So my focus is to finish ultimate reset and then go into lift four. Now. Every coach should be focused first and foremost on your journey. Okay, you're going to hear people talk about that over and over and over again because I think sometimes we forget that, right? We don't remember that our business is connected to our results. And while it's hard during the summer to be so disciplined, um, Lift 4 is one of those programs that you can still get results with and still have fun. Okay, so that's my first focus. The other thing, you guys, is that 2B mindset is still really, really, really hot, you guys. It's one of those things that I don't think will ever go out of style because it gives people freedom um, to choose their food and to learn why it's important to eat healthy, okay? I can't get enough of Alana. Um, I absolutely adore her, and I hope to do more coach test groups with her because she's so freaking amazing. Um, so it's 2B mindset. And then the last thing, you guys, is I'm I'm making sure that I'm talking about lift four. Okay. So I'm making sure that I'm adding in the new stuff. Now I know on our serious coach call last week, Britt said, you know, if you're doing well with 2B mindset, don't shift so much over to lift four quite yet. But honestly, guys, I think that if you're doing 2B mindset, you should still be talking about lift four because even if we're not doing the program, there's going to be things that, um, we're not, you know, gung ho on, or we're not specifically doing that could be helping other people. Okay, so my focus, my own journey, my own journey, uh, to be mindset and lift. Okay, and now here with the lift four thing, you guys, I am mainly focused on inviting people to the coach test group. With that, if you are not doing that, you guys, you're missing a huge area, and these people are not coming in just strictly as discount coaches. Okay. I don't ever call them discount coach, okay? I give them the opportunity to come into this test group, and in the back of my head, I'm thinking, okay, these are like my top, top challengers for the month of July in August. These are the people that I have to make sure I get amazing results with Lift 4, I and mean, I want all of my challengers to get amazing results, but these are the people who I really, really am gonna you know, hone in on and make sure that I'm connecting with them and giving them the best support ever, because as they get results, they're going to want to become an active coach who's actually inviting people, right? When we're excited about something, we want to share it, you guys. And these people are already signed up as coaches. They just have to actually start doing it. So give them, you know, that, that extra love and care during the coach test group the first couple, three weeks. Um, let them just be a challenger and then introduce that, the fact that they could actually be working out as a business. That's my plan. I'm also sending them personal development books, okay? So I've asked them if they want Girl, Wash Your Face or The Compound Effect or um, You're a Badass. Those are the three options that they get to choose from, and I'm sending them that if they sign up for the coach test group, okay? The other thing, you guys, is the, the Beat Your Best, okay? So I hope that you guys have seen that. Hopefully, you all have gotten an email. I did not get an email, so I had to reach out to Coach Relations and say, I don't know what my bests are. Um, and so I was able to, you know, contact them, and they resent the email, and you should all be going for it, you guys. Just as the summer does not mean that this cannot be the best month for your business, okay? But you have to come into this month saying that, okay? Like, if you're in like that, oh, it's the summertime, so I'm just going to be like a little slower then you're going to have a really slow month, okay? But if you come in and you say, you know what, I want to see what I'm made of. That's how I feel right now. I don't know if it's the optimize on the ultimate reset that we, my mom calls um, beach body speed or what it is, but I'm like, okay, this is going to be the best month of 2018 by far for my husband and I, okay? So make sure it's your best month too, okay? And you can win some really cool um, medals for beating your best successful points 
And if you have a team, um, helping your team, say you have five people who have hit success club before and on your team, helping six people. So just upping it by one, you guys. Um, me, I like to really push myself. So I'm like, when I see people say, oh, I can just get one more, I'm like, you should go for five more. You know, you should go for five more success club points. You should go for, you know, four more coaches hitting success club. Why just do one, you guys? Don't do the safe thing. Don't do the safe thing. Push yourself, okay? There's more people out there that we could be helping. Um, the last thing, you guys, is, you know, I basically said it. This has to be the best month, okay? And you have to make that decision. Okay, so let's go into the actual calendar, guys. Where did I put my notes? Okay. So if you look at it, you guys, today is July 2nd, holy moly. Um, you'll notice that I say invite posts to the 2B Mindset group starting on July 9th. Now, if you have a 2B Mindset group that already started, then you probably don't want to invite to a July 9th one, right? But for me, I start my 2B Mindset group on July 9th. And then I start my um, Lift 4 group on July 16th when it launches, okay? So you'll notice this last week, or this first week of July, I'm inviting to 2 Mindset to be able to finalize it, okay? And some of you are probably thinking, but that doesn't give them enough time to get their Shakeology. I'm okay with my customers starting without having their Shakeology, okay? Ooh, I said it. I really did say it. Because they can get the videos within like hours of signing up. I think it's like immediately actually um, that they can get their to be mindset videos. I do want to have them signed up by Friday just so that I can enjoy the weekend and not stress out because I don't like to really work on the weekends. But um, you can you can have your deadline be July 7th or 8th, okay? But this is just the way that I'm setting it up. You'll also notice that I have jab posts, you guys. This is where a lot of coaches go wrong, okay? We do call to action type posts and then we get frustrated because no one comments or no one likes. And here's the thing, you guys, they have no idea what the heck you're talking about, okay? If you don't talk about what you're doing, then when you actually invite people to do it, they're gonna be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, okay? You have to share throughout the week. Ooh, I hear fireworks. <laughs> but you have to share throughout the week what you're doing or what you're inviting to, and it's kind of creating that excitement and FOMO um, to whatever you're inviting to, you guys. So if you notice, I have jab posts throughout the month, okay? So the first week, it's focused on to be mindset because I'm inviting to to be mindset. If you are inviting to a particular thing, the majority of your posts, you guys, for that week should be focused on that thing, okay? Because whatever you're talking about is where your invites are gonna be coming from, okay? You'll notice, even on jab type posts, and what I mean by jabs, you guys, are that's not an actual invite post, okay? That's maybe talking about the fact that um, you were able to learn that you can have a glass of wine every single night and still lose weight, okay? Or that you finally um, broke through your plateau um, over the last couple weeks, okay, or whatever. It's not an invite. It's like creating that, hmm, what is Carrie doing? What is Elizabeth doing, okay? Um, so that's what a jab type post is. A call to action, or you can call it a hook, is when you're actually inviting people, okay? So you'll notice it's not every single day, you guys, and I actually specifically say, I think a majority of them, um, on Instagram or on Instagram stories or on Facebook, okay? So you can take it the way it is, but this is how I'm doing it. Um, the other thing, you guys, is that, and I said it before, but please stick to your journey. Please stick to your journey, you guys, because that is going to boom your business, okay? You look at Emily Favre, who went from Diamond, if anyone else, like, man, we've heard her name a lot, but Diamond to 15 star in three months, you guys, and I know a lot of people say, oh my God, that's so amazing, I couldn't do that. Why do you do that to yourself? You could absolutely positively do that, okay? You just have to commit to it. Okay, and stop telling yourself that you couldn't do it. So it starts with your results, you guys. That is like the quickest way to boom your business. I think of my friend Corey Mayo, who had amazing results with ADD Obsession. That, that her successful points through the roof, you guys, over the last couple of months because she committed to her journey, okay, um, and got amazing results and shared all of it. Okay, number two, you guys, you'll see that I say, where is it? when we start talking about coaching, okay, so um, the week of uh, July 15th, you want to make sure that you are jabbing about something that coaching has done for you that is not income-based, 
okay? People are like, when they see income-based type posts, okay? Yes, you can sprinkle them in here and there, like maybe sharing the fact that you paid off like debt, you know, you paid off a credit card, or you were able to, you know, pay for your kid to go to summer camp with your beach body paycheck, or you're able to whatever, okay? You can sprinkle that in, but what I would suggest you do is create a list, and I'm not telling you how long or short it should be, um, just keep adding to it. I have one on my phone of things that coaching has done for me, and that is what your, your coaching jab for, you know, the, the last three weeks, I guess. Why are there five? Whatever. Anyways, um, those are what your jab should be about, okay? It's not focused so much on the opportunity, but the fact that you, this coaching opportunity or coaching opportunity, this coaching gig has created solutions for you. Okay. So for me, I never had close girlfriends. Now I have really close girlfriends that I talk to more than my family. Okay. Um, or the fact that I finally feel like I fit into something. Okay. Talk about those things, you guys, the things that like get you excited about coaching. Okay. Or the fact that you finally feel passionate about doing something. Okay. So create that long list of stuff. And I know you guys have done this before, but how many of you are actually using that list? Probably a very small chance. Okay. So pull the list back out, keep adding to it and use those as your coaching jabs. Okay. Um, the other thing is that, let me make sure. Oh, I wanted to give you guys some examples. So you'll see that I do, you know, a call to action. Okay, so CTA stands for call to action, guys. Okay, and I say on Instagram stories with a poll. Okay, now for, you know, example purposes, do I hear Tomlin crying? Yeah, she's crying because there's fireworks. Oh, she was sleeping, you guys. These darn fireworks for kids. I can't handle it anymore. I don't like fireworks anymore. Anyways, Kirk can deal with that. Um, so, you guys, refocusing in. Um, example with a poll, okay? So, for say we're talking about TV mindset, okay? I'm going to do three videos of me talking. This is an example. And I say... Um, do you consider yourself an emotional eater and you know talk a little bit about yourself maybe you had some issues with emotional eating or do you consider yourself someone who always falls off the bandwagon with your uh, nutrition or are you a yo-yo dieter okay so I'm going to talk about those three topics in very short 15 second increments thank God it cuts you down to 15 seconds okay and then I'm going to say um, if you said yes to any of those, if they apply to you, I would absolutely love to have you in my to be mindset group, or you can call it your mindful eating group. That's what I call mine or nutrition workshop, whatever you want to call it, you guys. And then you'll see that a lot of coaches do this and I do it too. You can swipe up. So I'm going to say this in a video. You can swipe up or you can vote below. Okay. And just give them the option to do the poll. Now, when you do polls, the majority of you guys know this, but make sure that you don't say yes and no. Don't give them the option to say no, you guys. Do not give them the option, okay? Say, yes, I want in, or more info. Those are the two options that I always do, you guys. Yes, I want in, or more info, okay? Or another example is you could say, are you struggling with emotional eating? It could just be a picture of you maybe like eating a donut, okay? Or, um, you know, having a glass of wine or whatever. And you say, are you an emotional eater? Or do you struggle with emotional eating? And just do a very easy poll, you guys. Yes and no, okay? There you can use the yes and no, okay? And you invite those people who say yes. Those are invites. Uh-oh, I see baby. Come here, tell me. Darn fireworks. It's okay, baby. I know you were sleeping. Okay, so I'm going to do it. This is what mom was going to do sometimes, right? Okay, so another example, you guys, is um, coaching, like a coaching example. Last night, um, I did one, and some of you guys saw it, and I said, you know, I talked a little bit about what I do as a coach and how I was so excited to, you know, talk on Autumn's call. Oh, look at how rosy your cheeks are, baby. Um, and I said, um, what did I say? I said, are you passionate? Are you someone with a good heart? Are you someone who um, enjoys health and fitness? If this is you, um, I would love to have you on my team. Just vote below 
or, you know, swipe up and message me. Okay. And I didn't have a ton of people. You guys, I think I only had like six or seven people vote, but I was excited about that. Cause I'm like, okay, these people say that they have those qualities. Those are people who I want to talk to. Okay. So those are just examples of polls. You guys be creative, use those polls. Cause those are the things that are working right now. Um, I hear from a lot of people who say like, Oh, the polls don't work for me. You have to train your followers. You guys, you have to train them to actually use polls. Okay. So if they're like, you're like, I'm not getting anyone. Do some fun polls, okay? Like, does your kid like fireworks? Yes or no, okay? Or do you celebrate Fourth of July? Or you know, do you like wine or having a you know a bowl of ice cream? You know, do fun polls throughout the day. Brittany Wright does a really good job with that, um, keeping your followers engaged, and then they get used to responding to polls to you, and you will see your poll numbers go up when you actually do call to action. Okay, and it's normal when you do call to action polls to have less people. Okay, because people get scared. They're like, oh, I don't know if I should vote on this or not, but they're watching. Okay, and at the right time, they will. Um, an example, oh, those are basically the examples you guys use the polls, use the polls. Um, call to actions on Facebook. Brittany talked a lot about that in our um, serious uh, coach Zoom last week, you guys. If you didn't watch that, go back and watch it. But she talks all about that. Um, and you wanna make sure, you can go sit with Daddy. <laughs> um, you have to make sure that, you know, you're not just saying, I'm looking for five girls. That's not working anymore, you guys, number one. Number two, Facebook will ding you, okay? Some of you guys might still be getting a good response with that, but what I've heard is if you try to single out a certain kind of person, Facebook will be like, mm -mm, you're not getting into the new speed, okay? So come up with creative ways to talk about coaching, you guys. Come, um, come up with creating way, creative ways to talk about challenge groups, okay? And don't be afraid to try, okay? Majority of posts that I put up first, they fail, you guys. And then I have to go back and tweak things and be like, okay, that didn't work, let me change the wording, sorry you guys, um, let me change the picture or whatever um, in order to make it work for me, okay? Um, next thing you guys is think about wording and timing in the picture. Um, I, I see sometimes challenge group posts or you know coaching posts go up at like eight o'clock in the morning and I'm like, you guys, it's a Tuesday uh, morning and people work. People work, okay? And what happens if we put it up at that time, by the time they get off work, they're not gonna see that post. It's not gonna be in their news feed unless they have like four friends on Facebook, okay? Um, because you're probably the only one that's actually posting on Facebook, right? It's usually my dad who's like, you know, he's voting on it with a Snoopy or something. That's like his favorite emoji. Um, so make sure that you're thinking about timing, you guys. You'll notice on these, I say after 9 p.m., okay? The other ones, you know, after post at 4 p.m., you know, trying to come up with some good times, you guys. If you know there's a time that works well for you, try it. You know, I was just talking to a coach that said, you know what? Thursday nights work really well for me because people want to be already on the weekend by Thursday. So they do a coaching invite post on Thursday, okay? Thursday night, because people are like, I don't wanna go in for Friday. Find what works for you. The only way you're gonna find what your followers like is play around with the days, the time, everything. Okay, so this is what works for my followers as of right now. Um, also, pictures, you guys. Facebook is less perfect. Okay, people want to see less perfect on Facebook. They want to see, they don't care if your background is clean. Okay, they don't care if like the lighting is perfect. They don't care if you have makeup on, okay? Then on Instagram, those are pretty pictures. That's like where I'm not so good at, you know, because it's like I don't take the time to clean up my pictures. But Instagram is where you want to make sure that your pictures are pretty, okay? So remember the picture type thing. The last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is you know, throughout this week, okay? So you'll see the first week we're inviting to 2B Mindset. The second week you start inviting, oh, and I spelled that wrong, sorry guys. <laughs> You're gonna start inviting to um, the Lift for t Coach Test Group if you're not already, okay? The third and the fourth week, you're talking about coaching, you guys. You're inviting to coaching. And the reason that I have it set up where you're only focusing on like one thing per week is that when our followers get overwhelmed when they see you talking about a million different things in a week, Okay, and number two, we get overwhelmed when we have to talk about more than one thing in one week. 
right? Don't you feel like you're being pulled in so many different directions? I remember when they launched To Be Mindset and then Lift 4 just, what, a month later, or the before Lift 4, I was like, ah, I don't even know what I'm supposed to talk about right now. You know, I, like, I'm so overwhelmed. And then you feel like you're dropping the ball. If you focus on one thing per week, okay, it's almost like the bulk tasks that Abby talked about on our seriousness call, okay? Hi, right, baby. Um, you can come up and say hi, Tell me. But it's just helping you not multitask, you guys, because no one is a good multitasker, even if we think we are. Um, but the last thing that I wanted to say is, so while you're looking at these days or these weeks, you guys, you're going to be doing quite a bit of inviting, okay? And you need to follow up. So what I like to do is I like to bulk task my follow-ups, okay? So what I mean by that is one day where I do majority of my follow-ups, I have it scheduled, and some of you guys have heard me say this before, as follow-up Friday. Now, I'll be honest, there are some Fridays I don't want to follow up because I hate following up. Following up is my frog, okay? I'm like, I hate follow-ups. So, if I don't do it Friday, I have a backup day to Monday, okay? And Monday is where I do all of my follow-ups from all of the people who I had invited over the last week, okay? Some days, if, especially at the end of the month, if I'm inviting people every single day, if you see, you know, down here we have a little more call to action type posts. Um, if I'm inviting every single day, then I'm following up every day or two when it gets down to the end of the month, you guys. But majority of the time, one day a week. Now, if you're someone who wants to like just do five or six per day, that's okay. Uh, for me, I like to, I'm a to-do list person. I like to check things off and I do better with bulking stuff. Um, I think that's it, you guys. I, like I said, I will send this um, game plan calendar to you, but I really want you guys, if you're not already doing this, having at least, you guys, at least two to three call to action type things every single week. Because if you're only doing one, you guys, and you're like, I just am not getting my numbers up, I can't get enough invites out, or I don't have anyone to talk to you're not inviting enough. You're not putting enough content out there to even give people a chance to invite or to, to say that they want information. Okay, so you just got up it. And it's gonna feel weird at first. Mommy. What, baby? It's gonna feel weird at first, but you gotta, you gotta up it. All right, let me see what Anna said. Let's see. She said, okay, Elizabeth said, this is something big I've changed in the last year that's helped promote one thing per week. Me too. You know, it just makes me feel less crazy. Um, can we focus on 2B and um, lift on the other? Yes, absolutely. Um, you're welcome, Michelle. Um, or should we be, should we stay consistent? I, okay, can we focus on 2B on one and lift on the other? Oh, do you mean throughout the week? I would say, you know, focus on one, focus on one for each week. So if you guys have it flipped where you're like, I'm not running a 2B mindset group, talk about lift four this week, you guys. Talk about lift four this week and next week and then the last two weeks of July, oh baby, the last two weeks of July, um, focus on coaching, okay? Or if you're not running a lift four group, fireworks, come on. <laughs> if you are not, it's ridiculous, you guys. I'm not going to sleep. Um, it's pretty chill. watching the fireworks. Um, if you are um, not running a, um, a lift four group and you're like, I want to focus on TV mindset the first two weeks, totally fine, you guys. But I really would focus on one thing per week, okay? Because your followers are going to appreciate it. You're going to feel more focused. You're going to feel like you're getting more bang for your buck with your invites, okay? Because... Like Abby said on our serious call, I know for me, it takes me time to build up my invites, right, where I get comfortable, and the more that you do, you're like, okay, I'm getting in the flow, I feel really good. So if you're focused on one thing per week, by the end of the week, you're going to feel like, I freaking crushed this week. You know, I did amazing with these invites. And then you can switch the focus to another thing, so it feels fresh and exciting and new, and you don't get bored, Okay. <laughs> you guys, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for hopping on. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, I will print that calendar or put that calendar in the file section of our new and improved important team for the addicted group. Charlie, do you want to say bye? Say, I need to go to bed. Say bye bye. Say bye. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, she's going to be shy.